All right, everybody, welcome. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it happens to be for you. I want to welcome you to the room. I want to thank you for spending some time with us today. Um, hello, Kanit, Naren, Nilesh, and YouTube. Uh, if you guys um, have any questions as we go, feel free to ask them. We'll be monitoring the questions we'll be, as we go. And uh, I know you're here to get a legal disclaimer, so here it comes. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, today we do have a very special guest, Rahul Mohindar. Uh, Rahul has been a partner of Metastock for uh, longer than I've been an employee of Metastock, uh, more than decades now at this point. He's uh, one of dealers uh, in India. He, uh, the main thing that he does in India is teaches people how to trade. Uh, he's developed a lot of methodologies. Uh, I have so a soft feeling in my heart for Rahul because I've, you've probably seen a lot of the videos I've done. I've done hundreds and hundreds of videos on the Rahul Mohinder oscillator. This is the Rahul Mohinder that created that particular template. So it's the very, very first system that I ever started to trade with. Uh, one of our most important partners and somebody that we here at Metastock just love to death. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute your microphone, Rahul. We'll go ahead and get you all switched over. How are you doing this morning? Very well, Jeff. Thank you for having me. And it's always a delight to uh, be up here and, and try and help uh, fellow users of Metastock. So something which I feel is a great initiative that a company like yours takes. So. Um, yeah, absolutely thrilled to to be here, and I hope we can uh, get a lot of uh, education out there and help a lot of traders and users. All right. Well, I can tell you uh, that we can see the screen. We can hear you. You sound great. Um, I'm going to do what I do best, and I'm going to get out of your way. <laughs> well, thank you, Jeff. Thanks so much, and we'll, we'll keep connected. Uh, with the questions later on as we go along the session, maybe or more towards the end, actually. Folks, welcome for all of you joining in. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking out the time. Uh, I think it's uh, an excellent initiative that Metastock does to help its users and uh, customers to get educated with the software they provide rather than just being a software provider. It's very important to support you through that journey because I think it's when you win that we win together. And uh, that's something that uh, uh, I really care about, and which is exactly why I'm here as well. Uh, my entire career uh, you know, has been technical analysis. It's rotated all around technical analysis. So the best introduction that I could give about myself and very brief introduction that I could give is that uh, Here's somebody who's a trader, investor, uh, someone who puts his own money on the line. I'm not someone who's uh, you know, earning money out of giving recommendations or doing the brokerage business. My core uh, passion, my core business is uh, trading and technical analysis is at the heart and soul of what I do for over two decades. Uh, professionally, yes, uh, director of Viratech, uh, very active trader. Uh, I trade stocks, options, futures, uh, quite a few markets, including uh, Asia, America, uh, you know, right up to China and Australia. So have invested and uh, am uh, actively trading all of these various markets. Uh, so I think the way I connect to you today is first from the heart of a trader uh, besides anything else. And, you know, hopefully over this limited time, I'll be able to showcase to you what really led me to building the system uh, in the RMO and what you could do with it, whether you're an investor, whether you're a day trader, whether you're someone who trades futures and options. I think there is uh, quite a bit of potential when you use the RMO system no matter what asset class you're trading, no matter what time frame you're trading. I think above all, I like to simplify 
the armo is a system that uh, uh, you know, helps you automate analysis. It helps you detect what I call the primary trend. And when I say primary trend, a lot of you may call that the long-term trend, the major trend. So in other words, if I say the major trend of a stock is up, you're basically using declines as an opportunity to buy or vice versa. If you think that the major trend or you've identified that the armo is negative and it looks uh, long-term bearish, you're going to use those rallies up as an opportunity to go short. So the good part is you could go long and short both with the uh, RMO template. And what I'm showing to you right now is included in Metastock and you can apply the template. So what we're discussing now isn't built into Metastock uh, and you could profit from it right away. So I will uh, kind of give you a brief peek at my RMO ATM add-on as well. But again, I'm going to try and focus more on the armor today so that uh, you could actually apply uh, the inbuilt uh, indicator suite right away. Now, uh, the most important thing in my learning is that today, if you look at technical analysis, it's very complicated. A lot of people draw too many lines, use too many indicators. And I think uh, me as a practical trader realized that there's enough of crowding, there's enough of complication within indicators. I mean, when you look at someone doing technicals at times, it looks like, my gosh, I mean, it's it's you can rarely see the chart. There's so many things plonked on top of it. And I wanted that sense of clarity. I wanted to remove the subjectivity. I wanted to get into the objectivity. I wanted to get into the phase where I'm not just an analyst. I can work on my trading skill. I could work on uh, you know how I would make money. How do I quantify the trade? How do I qualify the trade? I think that's where uh, I really wanted to spend my time with. And you know, that's what gave birth to a system like the Armo. So the Armo is something which uh, I developed purely first for my own training. And uh, of course, uh, there's a long story of how it got into Metastock. But yes, it did very well for uh, so many users that you know, I guess there comes a point where you realize that there's much more benefit if we could make this available to more and more users. So the RMO is something which is going to help you no matter what asset class you trade, no matter what time frame you trade. Personally, I tend to be a little more shorter term. And when I say shorter term, I like to use charts like uh, you know, a 60 minute chart or a daily at times. But you know, I'm not someone who's, who looks too much at weeklies and monthlies because uh, I really need to focus on the time frame that I trade in. I'd like to probably start by saying that no matter which system you use, you need to focus on one time frame because that's going to help you assess whether that system is working for you seven out of 10 times. So if I tell you that the system is about 70% accurate, how do you feel the accuracy? You need to be on the same stock with the same quantity, the same rules, the same system 10 times in a row to realize that you're seven out of 10 accurate. If you're gonna keep jumping stocks or keep changing the interval, that's not gonna help us, okay? With this brief uh, uh, you know, uh, know-how, let's move ahead on the RMO. And the RMO is a simple oscillator which is going to be interpreted as whether it's above zero or below zero. And if it's above zero, it's bullish. Below zero, it's negative. Now, if I look at the conventional suite of indicators, here's a chart with uh, indicators which are fairly popular to the beginner or amateur trader often, the RSI, the MACD, nothing against them. But what happens if you're using a MACD? You keep getting upward and downward crossovers. And you have to keep understanding, for example, in this phase over here, you're going to keep on trying to see whether is this a sell, is this a buy, is this a sell again? So there's a lot of flip-flop within the signal and there's a lot of manual filtration that you need to be doing. And I felt there's a lot of overinterpretation happening. And you know, if one trade goes bad, then you lose confidence on the next one. And to cut a long story short, I didn't want a system which gave me excessive signals without a long-term sense of direction. For example, the RSI, a very popular indicator, has a lot of benefits. For example, the negative divergence. For those of you all new to it, when price makes new highs, but you see the RSI is unable to make new highs, that's called a negative divergence. So you can see price is making new highs or rising tops, but the RSI is not able to make rising tops. That's called a negative divergence. And yes, whilst you've seen the negative divergence, you can see this market is rallying constantly up. 
which means it's really not about identifying where the divergence is. It's about where will this divergence end? Where has that divergence confirmed that it's ended and the trend is shifting? So I thought there was a lot of complexity. There was a lot of manual subjectivity, you know, a simple thing like drawing a trend line. Quite honestly, when I would draw a trend line, I would try and fit the trend line to my trade. I'd like to see support where I'm buying it. I'd like to see it breaking a, a key trend line if I'm shorting that stock. So, you know, I would twist and turn and adjust that trend line, maybe start from a better point, try and see a different connection on that line and, uh, you know, fit it. And, you know, as I would say, we're all human and we put our emotions in that, uh, uh, you know, in that trend line. So even when you look at support and resistance, people are manually plotting horizontal lines and often they're plotting that horizontal line exactly where they are taking the trade or where they want the support to be. So let's be honest to ourselves. Let's look at the mirror and ask ourselves that, you know, are we in a subjective process of analysis? Because if I tell you that, you know, analyze a stock manually, what's going to naturally happen is you're going to kind of believe the indicators that you want to believe and trust, which are telling you what you want to hear and, and you what you want to do. So let's not take away from the fact that we have complicated the science. We need something to give us a more automated sense of direction. We need something which makes us a little less emotional. We need something which helps us become what I call a rule-based trader. The sad part is today we keep changing the stock. If we make a mistake, we say, oh, you know, hourly charts don't suit me. I'm going to look at the daily. And, you know, when the daily gets stopped or we say, let's look at the weekly. And, you know, then you say, let's change the system. And that's the whole, uh, you know, it's like a vicious circle, which I'd kind of warn you uh, before you get into using any system that, you know, please, whatever system you use, RMO or no RMO, if you want to give any system a fair chance, give it at least 10 shots to say I'm 6 out of 10 or 7 out of 10 or 8 out of 10 or whatever that number is. And more than just hit rate, try and also look at your risk is to reward. When I lost money, did I lose a dollar? When I made money, did I make $2? You know, those are the elements you need to focus on more than just a hit rate, right? So when I looked at all of these manual methods and models that I used, and mind you, uh, having used technical analysis for more than 20 years, I've been someone who's worked with Metastock version three onwards. And, you know, those were the days of the 5.4 inch floppy drive. So, uh, you know, I definitely would say that I can really appreciate what Metastock is doing for you. It's churning so many indicators out so easily that we're you know, we I feel very often that we have way too many indicators, and I keep citing this to Kelly and Scott up there. I said, look, the Metastock gives you too much. It just gives you way, 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 way more than what you and I really need. So I think you've got uh, an excessively powerful Metastock here, and I think what we need to do is make ourselves excessively powerful and at the same time very tame and disciplined. And I think the RMO is here to help you do that. So when you look at the RMO over here on this chart, you see the RMO is either above zero or below zero. If I look at the number of MACD buys and sells, just look at the central part of the chart, you know, where you've got the RMO in negative for a long period of time. You would see in the months of August, September, October, November, December, we've been negative RMO. But in that, you've had a lot of MACD buys and sells. In that, you had an RSI, which is keeping on giving you a positive divergence. I felt by using something like the RMO A, I have to use less tools. And I use a tool that's more efficient, more reliable, and less complicated. I am not trying to tell you to interpret the shape and the size of the oscillator. In other words, when you look at the RMO, it looks very simple. But don't get into critical thinking as to, oh, you know, the size is very high over here. It's curling down and it's curling back up. So I'm not asking you to study the curls. I'm not asking you to study divergence. I'm not asking you to look at the size of the oscillator or the width or height of it. All I'm interested in is the RMO is above zero. The oscillator is above zero. It's bullish. And if there's long-term strength on it, I want to be buying, looking at opportunities to go long. And if it's below zero, I want to look at opportunities to go short. The idea of helping 
you with the RMO template is so that it simplifies this process of you having to manually churn out. I can tell you, you may look at six or seven different indicators. And if you think about it with a calm mind, the RMO does a wonderful job of blending in so many different aspects of the trend and telling you very clearly, is it bullish or bearish? And I think uh, as and when you'll evolve in the field of technical analysis more and more, I think all of us realize that there is a very important need for us to be unemotional and to be using something which is system driven, something which is a little more mathematical. I'm not saying you have to lean on it like a black box, but something which channelizes you. The minute you open a chart and you see RMOs above zero, you know that directionally I'm channelized that I need to be buying. Or if I see the armor below zero, I'm directionally channelized that I need to focus on the selling side. So direction becomes easy. I need you to get that comfort zone with the system because then you will focus on, okay, if it's bull bullish, where do I buy? What's the kind of risk I could take? Let's quantify it. Let's qualify it. How do I look at the best trades with the armor? I think that's where you and I need to be working on more than just identifying is it bullish or bearish. So the beauty is Metastock is doing that blending for you. And what we need to work on now is where exactly do I buy? What are the rules for buying? What are the rules for selling? For those of you absolutely new to it, Simply right click on your chart, apply template. What I'm applying is called the RMO trade model. This is pre built in Metastock, and you hit apply. The moment you apply the template, you will automatically get the entire suite of the RMO indicator set, which is right on top the RMO oscillator. And the second window has what I call the swing trade indicators, which are calculating the short term and medium term trends. And then you also have something called the exit swing indicator, which I will come to in a bit. That's going to help us exit the market. And then you have the core price chart, which is shaded in blue bars or red bars. The blue bars indicates a medium term positive trend. The red bars indicate a medium term negative trend. Now, so for those of you wondering what are the other elements on this chart, if you look at the arrows that you see, the arrows are signals of short term trends, right? So in other words, if the short term trend is looking up, you get a buy arrow. If the short term trend is turning down, you get a red colored sell arrow. So in other words, don't interpret every arrow as a point where you're going to be buying and selling necessarily. It's more to give you a point of where that short term trend is shifting. How is it getting calculated? Well, it's using the swing trade indicators. And just to help you understand, you've got the short term, medium term, and long term. Now, the moment you see that the uh, pink histogram is above zero, that's what's shading them blue colored bars. The minute you see an intersection of the pink and the blue lines, that's what's generating, let's say, a sell arrow over here because they've intersected. Now, you don't need to really refer to the swing trade indicators. I'm just explaining it to you more so that you can understand what I'm doing is I'm layering. I'm layering short term, medium term, and long term because you know this is the big issue. A lot of people want to understand all the three elements. What is it looking like in the short term? What is it looking like in the medium term? What is it looking like in the long term? My clear sense is if the long term is up, we need to find where can I get an opportunity to buy. In other words, you and I will obviously be most comfortable buying if the RMO is up or going short if the RMO is in negative territory. So what am I really looking for? I'm looking for a synchronization of where the short term, medium term, and long term, all three are up so that I could go long. Right? Rather than me manually saying, let's look at a 15 minute chart, let's also check a 60 minute, and then let's also check a, a daily, I would rather just focus my energies on one time frame, let the template analyze the short term, medium term, and long term, and I take a decision just on that one template, one time frame. Right. So the moment you see that you've got a blue colored bar, that means the medium term trend is up. And if you've got an arrow that's up, that shows the short term is up. And if you see the RMO is bullish, which means the oscillator is above zero, you have an opportunity to buy. Now, you also have a ribbon at the bottom, which uh, stamps it for you as RMO bullish. So that way, it's easier for you. It's a very visual approach. The minute you open this template, there's no lines, there's no averages that you need 
it's a very comfortable view in fact if you want to simplify this even further you can shut the swing trade indicators because that's automatically been calculated within the price chart in other words the arrows and the bar colors are already computing the swing trade indicators in all practical fairness i do not personally use those swing trade indicators because the expert is stamping the arrows and the bar colors right now when you look at this chart let's try and kind of make a little rule set as to why we are trying to trade in the primary trend direction i think it's very simple if the long term is up it increases our odds of winning if we go long if the long term trend of the rmo is up if we buy we are then trading in the direction of the stronger force and we are trading in the direction of the long term or the big picture so i think there's that natural edge that when we synchronize our decision making process our direction towards the long term trend we obviously have a chance of much better wins it's a bit like saying you know the river is flowing upstream you obviously are going to be easier off going upstream you don't want to go against the tide if you're going to go against the tide and say oh you know the market's the rmo is up and the market's going boom 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 imagine all the people who've been trying to short the market in 2021 or even 2020 trying to catch a top so i'm trying to say don't be a top picker or a bottom picker necessarily that's not what the rmo is going to help you do no one's going to give you a medal for catching the top or the bottom what matters is the medal that you can give yourself is the fact that were you able to detect the trend easily were you able to trade in the direction of the trend and last through it so i think that's the essence the essence is can we trade in the direction of the long term right and a lot of people you know when you are starting using a system like this you know i'd put it to you this way that you need to practice uh, the process of disciplining yourself you need to practice the process of maybe you start with a paper trade maybe you start with a small quantity but when you practice you're going to give yourself a fair chance you're going to let yourself build the confidence you got to keep working on it it's a bit of a journey right you don't overnight turn into uh, a perfect trader and even after having such a powerful system i'd always say i'd be more than happy if i won 6 out of 10 times 7 out of 10 times that's all i'm really trying to shoot for and above all in my wins i at least have a much higher win percentile than a loss percentile a much better risk is to reward if i'm risking one am i getting at least 1.5 or 2 so that's what matters to me and if you look at this blend uh, you would comfortably be able to achieve that with the rmo system and mind you i'm someone who who looks at the markets not just from a single market perspective i've put my money on the line even at this point in time i'm invested into various uh, you know longs and shorts be it in um, the american markets be it in the indian markets be it in uh, developing markets australia china the works so you know uh, it's not that i'm speaking to you with uh, an experience of you know one or two years of using one or two years of using a system or just trading one or two markets uh, i speak to you very very much as a trader to a trader who's been doing this for over two decades with one's own money on the line no one else is so uh, that's what matters and i think when i speak to you uh, with these rules i speak to you with so much of confidence just because i've experienced success with it and i think you as traders the fact that you're sitting here the fact that you're in this webinar today is a very very positive step because you've taken a decision that i want to get into a rule based approach i want to get into a model which helps me become more disciplined and i think the rmo is definitely going to help you now i would not like you to blend this with you know any other system because when i designed the system i didn't expect that oh you'll also check the weekly or you'll also check the rsi or you'll also check the 200 day moving average sometimes using too much only complicates it so in other words yes i'm asking you to simplify it because the rmo itself does so much of number crunching i really don't think you need to get into too much more give the system a chance before you really want to add more weight to it so just to recap the arrows signify the short term signal so in other words i'm talking about these arrows on the price chart 
the bar colors, red and blue, very simple. They signify the medium term trend. And finally, the long term is the RMO oscillator, which is so in other words, if I shut down even the RMO oscillator uh, window, I can see that on the ribbon on my X axis, right? So it becomes very easy for me. I can remove all the indicators on my chart and just look at the expert, which means it pretty much gives me all the information that I need to be taking in terms of a new trade. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. What are the rules to buy? What are the rules to sell? And where do I need to focus on? How do I take better trades using the RMO? The first thing I tell you is let's focus on the first breakout. What do I mean by the first breakout? The first breakout is the first time when the RMO shifts from a bearish zone to a bullish zone. Okay. So in other words, if you look at this chart back in November, we had a bearish zone and the bearish zone moved to a bullish zone, right? There was RMO was below zero. Now it went above zero. And obviously the arrow comes in earlier because that's a short term signal. Then comes a medium term. The bar colors turn blue. But you waited when all three synchronized because what are we looking for? We're looking for that synchronization of short term, medium term and long term. And when you see that all three have happened, that's when you get into a comfort zone that that's a proper breakout. That's a first breakout. And that's what you want to focus on. So honestly, you get to a stage where you would say, I only want to look for first breakouts. So focus on these first breakouts. What is an add on breakout? Subsequently, what happens is the market doesn't go always as a straight line up. We have these little peaks and troughs. We have the rotations down or corrections. And then you again get a buy signal, right? That's what I call an add on. So if you want to go very theoretically, you'll say, okay, this is a blue bar. This is a buy arrow. And the RMO is up. I've got all three rules telling me to buy. I can buy. Yes, you can. If you want to go very, very theoretically, Yes, by definition, I call this a 3D buy. In other words, when the short term, medium term and long term all three synchronize, it's called a 3D buy because the bar color is blue. The arrow is the second element and the oscillator is above zero, right? So 3D buy is when all three synchronize. Now, if you look at the red arrows that have come up, friends, if you look at the red arrow, what, am, what are you seeing? There's a red arrow, but the RMO is bullish. So in other words, you might be experiencing a bit of short term pressure at this point. But this is not a point you go short on. This is not a point you sell, right? We're looking for where to buy. Our focus is since the armor is up, we're going to look at where can we buy, not where can we sell. So in other words, uh, kind of put a blind eye to those arrows. You need to really look at opportunities to go long, not where you want to go short. Now, let's look at some more examples. So just to recap, these were the three pointers. The buy arrow indicates short term is up. That usually come first. Second comes the blue colored bars, which indicates the medium term trend has shifted up. And finally, you have the RMO, which goes into a bullish mode. In other words, if the RMO is above zero. And what we want to do is focus on the first breakout. So to recap again on this chart, I just want to make sure that we understand the 3D setup. In other words, the 3D buy or the 3D sell. And what is the first breakout and what is an add-on? We need to be very clear with this. This first line that you see over here is my first breakout because notice on the bottom, the RMO was bearish. From bearish, it rotated into bullish. So this is the first time where I have a blue bar. The buy arrow notice comes several days before this because that's the first signal. That's the short term. The blue colored bars come in much earlier. And then finally, this is the point where all three synchronize. So what we are looking for, folks, is not a day where all three come in together on the same day. Let's get this clear. If you are looking for that perfect situation that, oh, I want the arrow and the color shift and the RMO shift all on one single bar, could happen, but that's rare. And even if it does happen, that doesn't necessarily overqualify that signal. What I want you to try and see is where have all three synchronized. And usually within a few bars, you know, within a five, 10 bar space, they all come into sync, right? So when you look at the point over here, that first you got the arrow, then you had the bar color, then you had this point where the armor turned bullish. Now we buy above the high, right? So this is what matters. Why is this an add-on? The second vertical that you see is an add-on because this is a buy that's coming in the same chain up. There hasn't really been a sell. There hasn't been 
an RM or bearish phase before this, right? So this is really an add-on. Now I like to call add-ons as an opportunity for you, as the word suggests, to add on if you missed out on that first signal. Or more importantly, to me, it's a signal where you can lift your stops up, okay? Where you can trail your stop loss higher. So I'll talk about that in a bit, but uh, just bear in mind that an add-on signal is not the first point where you want to focus on. It's more an opportunity that if you missed out on that first breakout, it, you could probably rotate in, right? Now, don't focus on uh, you know uh, heavy quantities being bet on add-on trades. Try and look for the first breakout, like you see over here. The first point over here to go short is this point where you see the red arrow, the bar color, and the RMO turns from a bullish phase to a bearish phase. That's a perfect sweet spot, the first place to go short. Subsequently, the two other verticals that you see, these are all add-ons. I could even mark this bar as an add-on. So every red arrow and red bar that I see, I could say even that's an add-on because it satisfies the three conditions. I could go like a parrot and say there's a red bar and there's a red arrow and there's the RMO negative, so let's go short. Yes, you can. And yes, if you do, you also make money. But I think the biggest potential and the biggest juice is if you could focus on that first breakout. So my uh, sincere suggestion is if you're new to it or if you're experienced, you need to be focused on where can I find first breakout signals and which are a 3D buy or a 3D sell, right? So keep in mind that this is what we're looking for. And mind you, I will uh, share with you how you can scan for these. There are explorers also available to help you find these kind of signals. So don't worry, you'll be able to find all the 3D buys and sells, you know, in a few clicks. Whenever we say buy, so when I say that, okay, you've got all the three signals. So let's look at this one example. I've got blue colored bars, the arrows come in. And if you look carefully down over there, the RMO turned bullish at that point. I'd like to buy above the high. So in other words, it's a very simple confirmation. We're looking at using a simple trigger. So in other words, if it goes above the high, we are confirmed that this buy trade is actually kicked off. So use a simple trigger because look at this example. It doesn't take the high out and the buy never occurs. So this does happen. And it happens very often that you get a signal, but the signal does not trigger. In other words, you get a sign, but it doesn't really qualify. So keep this in mind that when you get a buy, you want to buy above the high. And when I say buy above the high, it's a very simple logic because Come back to the age-old Dow theory, buy strength, sell weakness. So when you go long, what is the simplest test of strength? Well, go above the previous bar's high. What is the simplest test of weakness if you're going short? Break the low of that bar. So in other words, if you even have a red bar, like this one over here, if it breaks the low of the red bar, at least you have a little bit of a confirmation that yes, the signal is validated and the direction is down. So use a trigger to buy. So in other words, if I had to kind of add on to what we just wrote here, a three-dimensional cell means a red bar, a red arrow, a negative RMO. I could also write sell below the low of the signal bar and focus on first breakouts, right? So if you want to kind of build on those rules to help you qualify and help you get better trades, don't just look for red bars and red arrows and negative RMOs qualify that, okay, is this a first breakout? Is it the first time a cell's coming? Are we moving from a bullish RMO into a bearish RMO? That's the signal of a first breakout. Am I breaking the low of the bar? So in other words, I'm not just randomly selling anywhere. I want to sell, I'm going to put an alert below the low or maybe a trigger below the low, a stop loss order if, I, if you want to put it that way. So if it breaches that level, I want to go short, right? So keep that in mind. Now, how do you place a stop when you uh, take these trades. I'm going to come to that, but this is a quick example. I took an extract of a 30 minute chart of Apple, and you'd see that uh, this is we probably have over a month's data over here. Mind you, this is a half hour chart. And if you look at this data over here, this is the simple RMO plotted on it. We got a sell back around February the 10th when you had blue bars which shifted into a red bar. You got the arrow and that's when the RMO moved from a bullish zone into a bearish zone, right? And you sell below the low of the bar. Mind you, 
it started going down but again in between here comes a little rally up and what are you thinking that when you got blue bars you start getting worried the armor went above zero momentarily for one or two bars but mind you it doesn't take the high out it doesn't take the high so even though you got a signal it did not trigger so don't get worried you need to keep the rules intact that even though this was looking like a first breakout up your short is still in place because it's only above that high that will you shift the trend so often when you see blue bars like this right and you see the rmo is negative you can actually say that let's use the low of the blue bar as an opportunity to go short reverse thinking that the downward trend is in place the long term looks down i'm going to use the blue bars as an indication that the market's rallied up a little bit the moment it loses its grip of those blue bars it'll once again slip down so think of it as an opportunity to go short right so no system is going to be perfect and i don't expect anyone to uh, you know look at perfection here even here you can see the rmo gave you a buy signal on this 30 minute chart you didn't make money yes you know the next five or six bars you're very happy that yes i got a first breakout it's looking great moved up but then again 10 bars later you see a red bar red arrow rmo negative everything sinks in perfectly and you say now nah, i'm going to sell below the low so this buy that you do over here you need to flip it out totally you might lose a dollar or two on it but you know that's it you you got to walk out of that buy trade which didn't really work out and you have a new first breakout sell why is this a first breakout sell because this is coming after an rmo bullish phase is turning into a bearish phase and it's the first signal so you have another opportunity to uh, go short on it so that kind of helps you understand how critical we're getting into uh, these charts with and, and directionally it makes my life very easy imagine if in the last one month of trading apple i could be trading in the right direction which is on the downside that's great yes i had one bad trade on the upside how bad was it maybe a dollar or two that's it but look at uh, in essence i've been able to trade in the direction down so uh, whatever time frame you use right whether it's i've just given you 30 minute here as an example maybe some of you are using a 5 minute i know users who like to use a 3 minute it's up to you you need to choose a time frame that you think you can connect to you can work to which you're comfortable with a lot of people come to me and say what's the best time frame well just because i like a 30 minute doesn't necessarily mean that you must be able to adjust to it it all depends on your profile you need to give yourself a little space and time uh, but i think the essence is try and ask yourself as to how quick can you be you know of, i found that you know maybe 3 minutes and 5 minutes and 10 minutes was too fast for me i didn't want to be glued to a screen right i wanted to uh, you know take my time on a decision and uh, you know try and look for bigger wins because uh, the minute you also get too small in terms of time frame your wins also go down in terms of dollar value so each one's different here and i think i could do another session all together on trying to explain to you how to choose a time frame but i think the goal is i think you get what i'm trying to tell you that focus on one time frame it's only when you follow one system on one time frame on one symbol 10 times in a row you will be able to feel the essence of that system right so let's look a little deeper stop loss how do you set up a stop loss now the ideal stop loss when we built the rmo all the testing was done on the fact that you at least use a five bar high low in other words if i have a sell signal over here i'm going to count back one two three four five and i'm going to use that as a stop so wherever your arrow is count backwards one two three four five bars and use that high as a stop if you're going to short likewise if i'm buying i'm going to count back five bars and use that low as a stop ideally speaking don't just restrict yourself to a five bar high or low what i want you to do is try and see where's the swing high low now those where's that fulcrum point i think it's a very visual process the minute you see it for example if i look at the last signal over here even though it's an add on where's the fulcrum point over here i'm not going to suffocate my stop loss to this level i'm going to try and use this one because i can see that's the last mini uh you know peak that it made the intermediate top that it made so try and have a little bit of a visual process to in terms of swing high low i don't like the fact that we mechanize it so much that oh it has to be a five bar high and low yes nine out of ten times a five bar high low is more than enough but again let's uh 
let's dwell deeper into this okay here's a chart of uh, the e minis i think this looks more like an hourly uh, frame and the reason i kind of took a, a quick snapshot out of it this is i think updated till this morning and you'd be able to see that on the es little c1 that's the symbol that i'm using the continuous e minis you see the two vertical lines where i'm buying and selling in other words where there's a 3d rmo sell and a 3d rmo buy mind you if i just use the five bar low as a stop i can use one two three four five i'll use this low and see how i get suffocated right you can always get that so don't get over mechanical try and use a swing low so when you're getting this buy over here it's the first breakout come on we're not in this for two or three bars we're in this for a bigger move when we're not buying a first breakout friends just to get the next two bars of magic we're trying to look at a primary trend that's shifting up maybe a series of 15 20 bars more or more in terms of a rally we're not trying to focus so please allow yourself give yourself that little space don't suffocate the trade to the point where you know uh, you get stopped out unnecessarily so whenever you get a buy try and look where's the last turning point that was the last turn. similarly here i don't need to manually count back one two three four five if i do that one two three four five it may be this bar now i'm just going to use the swing bar high and sometimes that may mean that you're giving a little extra space but that's fine you got to give it that little comfort and that way you are also solid that okay the stop that i'm using is a perfect stop now what do i mean by add-on trades look at the two circles here the two circles that i've drawn are basically add-on buys in other words you got another arrow you got another arrow if you buy at the add-on you say buy above the high you see the potential reduces you don't get that same fillip so the first breakout is where i need you to focus the add-ons i will use that okay wherever i get the add-on where was the last swing low this one so i'm going to lift my stop from here to here when i get this arrow i'm going to lift it up here so with every add-on i'm really using it more as a as a way to kind of lift my stop up more than anything else so use the add-ons as a as a model to trail your stop so here are more and more examples this is of course uh the phase of 2018 and 2019 on alphabet this is a, a chart of google on a daily and you can see how fantastically well from april uh, to august you know we had the big rally up when google moved up from 1000 to 1250 that was a wonderful rally in 2018 and you know we were part of that using the rmo notice we didn't catch the perfect top or bottom even when we went short we went short in october much lower but again that's a nice solid drop you were participating in the direction so i keep repeating don't use the rmo if you think you're going to be a top picker and a bottom picker that's not something which i think anyone is really going to be too successful at doing no matter how sharp the tools you use you know don't put yourself in the spot there it's much easier to kind of synchronize with the trend as they say the trend is your friend try and be in that long-term direction and i think i'm keeping on emphasizing that if you want to get into counter trend trading the atm has a lovely indicator in the counter trend indicator which uses volume uh, we'll talk about that in the following sessions but here again you can see 2019 that big rally that set off uh, all started with the first breakout rmo buy and you know if you follow along on that same alphabet chart right through 2020 the rmo has been bullish and you had every red bar has really been an opportunity for you to see wherever the red bar high actually gets taken out maybe it reverses back into that upward trend so it's been fantastic i mean if you look at the performance right from 2018 to 2021 till date on something like a google on a daily chart I mean, it just speaks volumes as to what such a system can do for you in terms of simplifying and qualifying the trading direction for you. So it's amazing as to how easy it can make your whole analysis process, your direction process, right? Now, if you look at here, this is a, another example where you'll see data of Apple. A similar story, you know, when we had the rally up back in 2018, we were able to stay long because of the RMO being bullish. The drop came in. So you had the whole, you know, the tech stocks were almost moving in sync. And you can see how beautifully, whether it was an Apple or a Google, that's, that's how it did for you. Let's come to the exit swing indicator. And the exit swing indicator is rotating around the fact that uh, you are going to be using this indicator once you're already into a profitable trade, right? So you've got into a buy signal, which has rallied up. 
when are you going to use the exit swing indicator? That's how the exit swing looks like. It's a dark green histogram, oscillates between 0 and 100. What you're looking at is when it rotates down from 100. That's a point where you might say, below the low of this bar, I want to take some profits on my buy trades. Right? So in other words, if you're long, use the exit swing signal once you've made a new high, once you've got a rally of five to 10 bars after you've taken a trade, you're profitable. That's when you use it. You don't start using the exit swing immediately on taking the trade. So let's repeat. You take your first breakout trade, you wait 10 bars or so, get profitable, see some solid money in your account. That's when you start looking at where do I exit? Because then you can exit, uh, you know, uh, wherever it looks like a small little tweezer top, you can exit and again re-enter a little lower down. Maybe you get red bars and you say, okay, whenever I get the next opportunity to buy, I'll buy a little lower, right? So the idea of using the exit swing signal is so that you're able to uh, be a smarter trader in terms of exiting. So uh, quick recap, we want to focus on those first breakouts. The add-ons are going to help us more to raise the stop loss. The exit swing that I talked about is for somewhere where you're in a one-way rally and you want a quick sign to get out a quick exit, you know, where you're well into a profitable trade. So the exit swing signal is all about trying to help you exit when you're in a sharp up move well in profit. And I think what you can do to qualify these trades is the fact that you can look at volume as well. So in other words, when you get an RMO buy, even though it may be a first breakout, if the signal bar or if you look two, three bars on the left and right of it are all under average volume. Mind you, what I'm using is a 50 period uh, average on the volume data. And this is defaulted into your RMO trade model template. There's no extra setting that you need to do. There's no plotting you need to do. When you right click apply template, this is what you get, right? So you will be able to see that moving average on the volume. And there's a reason I put that as the default is I felt that this is a wonderful confirmation that even though I'm getting a proper buy signal, look at that bar, look at two bars behind, three bars behind. If there's no foundation, there's no money, uh, you know, backing it because volume is equal to money. If there's no money backing the breakout, there's no participation, there's no excitement around that breakout. How is it going to travel through? You need money to fill up it, right? Look at this buy over here, blue bar, buy arrow. RMO turns from negative to positive, first breakout. But this time when you look at the volume, look two bars behind it, record volumes. It doesn't have to be that bar. I'm saying look two bars behind, look two bars forward. I need to see some money around the breakout. I need to have it qualified with volume. So this is a beautiful way that you can make the RMO system so much more efficient. So I, I keep saying, don't make this a black box. I think the problem is today, everyone wants to have this system which is absolutely automated. All they want to do is press a button, let the system start. All it does, it makes money for you. Let's concentrate on how to spend the money. There is no tap of money that you just open up. I believe there's no substitute to what you can add to the RMO system. There's no substitute to your brains and your effort and you're looking at the chart. That is something which will really take you places. So don't get into this mode of getting excessively automated. I think that'll drive us up the wall. So what we need to do is have a system which channelizes us, have a system which helps us trade in the correct direction, have a system that makes it easy and effective. Mind you, when I'm using the RMO template, it's literally a hands-free process. I'm not asking you to plot one more indicator, look for a divergence, or look at any shape or size, or draw any line or draw a trend line or confirm with a higher, I'm not asking you to do anything. This system is so well intertwined. So please appreciate there's a lot that's gone in to build it. And you know why I talked to you so passionately about it is uh, the amount that's gone under the hood to make a system like this and to better it and better it and better it. Uh, you know, one has dug very, very deep and one has tested this on various stocks and asset classes. So you'll never achieve perfection if you go as a black box. Look at this one, red bar, red arrow, everything, first breakout cell. When you look down at the volume, two bars behind, two bars forward. I, all I want is when you get the signal, let's have at least 15, 20% above average volumes, right? Something above average volumes. If I don't have above average volume, how am I talking about a long-term trend breakout, right? Think about it. RMO first breakout. It's a pretty solid move we're talking about. How can it happen without money?
how can it happen without volume participation right so the important pointers i can get to you with it is when you use the inbuilt metastock template try and focus on first breakout trigger it with a filter which means buy above the high sell below the low stay disciplined with the rules i want to place my stop at the swing high or the swing low if you can't find the swing high or swing low you can definitely just count back five and use it for those of you comfortable using fibonacci you can use fibonacci retracements also as a guide if you don't don't worry uh, finally very importantly you want to use volume as a confirmation which means whenever you get a first breakout buy or sell it's a good idea to check that at least plus minus two bars or where i've got my signal i have at least you know 10 to 20 percent above average volumes so that i know that the signal is qualified and i'm not just getting a signal in a sideways zone for those of you all using the uh, rmo atm add-on we've even built what we call an integrated scanner in other words this will automatically find for you where all three systems are integrated in other words blue bar buy arrow and rmo bullish if you want to find out at what point all three have come together you can simply run the integrated buy scan if you're specifically looking just for an arrow or a bar color you could go one by one into running the scan but mind you these are atm scans because these are integrated i also have something called a super filter and let me give you a bit of a sneak peek a small introduction into my uh, super filter or in other words what the atm does for you and in case you're wondering uh, you know what exactly is this atm it's automated trend modules it's an add-on it's a paid add-on which is optional but what the super filter does for you is it tries to filter out even the rmo whipsaws in other words it tweaks the rmo to the volatility of the chart that you're looking at think of it this way if i used a 10 day moving average on a chart it's not going to work perfectly well in all the symbols that you trade there may be a particular chart which works better on a 13 period there may be a chart that works better on an 82 period so the super filter works on an optimization concept it works on the concept of let me try and fit myself to the volatility of the chart that's being imposed look at this chart friends the super filter is marked in the form of colors blue bars and red bars but now we are introducing orange bars and light blue bars as well so it's not just red and blue red and blue are bearish and bullish but when you see orange orange means i'm still bearish but not excessively right light blue means it's like a bit of a warning bell when dark blue turns light blue it's a bit of a warning bell that i'm shifting out right so often when you get a buy signal over here if i just use the regular rmo i'm pretty sure over here you would get a blue bar typically speaking but in the super filter it stays orange it helps you understand that uh, you know if i used a tailor-made model on this chart don't buy this so even though the rmo is up even though you may be getting a blue bar on the older uh rmo system the refinement tells me the super filtering tells me that don't go with it so imagine it's like having a tailor-made suit versus just buying something off the rack right it's trying to it's trying to adjust to the body of the chart it's trying to adjust to the way this chart is moving right so if i had to look at a best fit scenario I'm much better off buying here because here I've got a dark blue. Dark blue is a perfect buy. And I have the armor bullish. So, you know, I'm comfortable with that buy. Right? So, I'm not going to be going into a buy position somewhere here. So, you may say that, okay, is the super filter something which only slows down the signal? In other words, do does it delay the signal? No. Notice you got a red bar, a deep red bar, before the RMO even turned negative. So in other words, the bar colors that you see on the price chart, on the bars itself, the super filter colors, as I would like to call them, and there are four colors, light blue, dark blue, orange, and red. These colors are refined based on an optimized model, and therefore, they will often be faster than the RMO, and where they need to be, they'll be slower than the RMO. Let's give you another example here. In this entire uptrend, there's been some chop where the RMO has been above zero below zero right look at these phases over here one bar above zero one bar below zero 
goes up two bars, three bars. So a little bit of a chop. Now, yes, you can refine it. You may manually go check volume. You can do the whole manual process of seeing whether you want to take that. Is it a first breakout, et cetera, et cetera. This is doing that uh, refinement for you. If it's dark blue, it's dark blue and light blue all the way. So you are absolutely comfortable staying on the buy side or the sell side. Notice these red bars have come in, and these are deep red bars, which means you can go short right there, even though the armor is bullish. Because mind you, these deep red bars are signifying that the optimized version of the armor, in other words, the super filter, is already fired into a deep cell, not just orange. It's gone to red. So notice it's a faster signal. It's faster by almost 10, 20 bars here. So where it needs to be slow, it's slow. For example, here, the RMO went into a negative, but this is still staying light blue. So it slowed down. Maybe the volatility is demanding. Here, I've got a dark blue, even though the RMO is negative. So in other words, if I'm using the super filter, I'm kind of doing a better job on the RMO itself. And mind you, to develop the super filter took us many years. It took us several years to better something which was already so solid and good. Because, you know, I'm someone who says that I don't want to do an upgrade just for the heck of it. We introduced the super filter in the Armo ATM version 3.0. And, you know, I didn't come out with version 3 for, you know, it took from version 2 to go to 3. It took me a good two years, if not more. And that's simply because I'm not someone who just changes a version number. I don't want to change a version number without adding some solid value, without testing the fact that, okay, is version 3 delivering more than what version 2 did? So the super filter itself, you know, on its own, this is just a sneak peek. Mind you, the ATM comes with, you know, seven core strategies. There's so many more strategies I've designed around someone who wants to trade futures or options or, you know, help you in sideways markets. There's so much more to it. I'm just giving you a sneak peek of one indicator, which is the super filter, because we're looking at it. Now, here's a chart where you will probably be able to understand it even better. On the bottom, that's the original RMO. On the top, that's the super filter. When you look at the original RMO, you may say, oh, you know, I've got red bars over here. And I've got the RMO slipping into a negative. Look down at that x-axis. But when I see light blue waves, I'm not wasting my time. I'm just staying long. So just look at that refinement. Isn't that wonderful? You're elevating that same system to a further more optimized fashion. Look at where the light blue comes in much before. You don't need to wait for that dark blue bar. You're buying earlier also, right? You're, you're getting a much faster signal at the same time where you need it and a slower signal where you need it. In other words, here you've got red bars here. It slowed down and said, no, no, it's light blue. Stay with it. The trend is still very intact based on the optimized super filter RM. Right. So that gives you a sneak peek. This is another indicator which I use. It's called the breakout catcher. Let's kind of jump to that one because, uh, well, that's the add on for those of you who are interested in buying it and learning more about it. It's called the RMO ATM 3.0. And that comes to you with something called the power screener. The power screener is an automated scanner. I'll just talk about it in a bit. And the reason, as I said, is that when you look at theory and you look at the real world, the real world requires a lot more optimization. That perfect trend line is drawn in the book. But when you come to the chart, you're not able to draw the perfect trend line, which is why you need optimization in the markets today. Here's an example, which you can see. I think this is it looks to me as a chart of Tesla. And if I look at this chart, uh, it's a 30-minute chart probably. This is a breakout catcher indicator. And the breakout catcher, what it does is, this is very different to the RMO system. It's something which is supposed to be a little faster and will help you identify where the market is in a dormant phase. So notice over here on the top, you see something called a zone detector. If the zone is at zero, right? You look at the indicator, the value of zero. It shows that the market is dormant. How do I know it's dormant? It's checking the volatility. It's checking the volume and several other elements. So if it's dormant, don't take a trade, even though it's got a red bar. Once it becomes hyperactive, in other words, when you get the fluorescent green bars coming in, that's when you take a trade. So if it's red color, you jump in on a bear market, right? So you want to make sure that the first breakout is when, from a dormant, you've jumped into a, a hyperactive phase, right? So likewise, you may have a blue bar. This is a breakout catcher buy. And mind you, this concept, you don't need to merge 
any of the so there are seven core strategies as i said and you don't have to merge it the breakout catches for someone who's trying to get a faster entry and exit he's not worried so much about the long term trend he just wants to go with the flow the trends up let's go with that current flow right so you see a dark blue bar here you want to buy above the high you see hyperactive doesn't take the high out so you can't go and buy look at this red bar that comes in why have i put a bit of a skeleton a danger sign here because it's dormant if you can have an indicator like the zone detector if you're in a dormant phase most indicators will fail because that's kind of telling you the market sideways when you have the blue bar and you see it hyperactive that's the signal you want to take so this dormant phase is something which is very important to us imagine even if you had used it on any indicator let's say you're someone who use candlesticks so macd's or rsi's or rocs or adx's whatever you use if you know that you're in a dormant zone avoid using any signal you want to trade when the market's in hyperactive and hyperactive means it's qualified on volume and volatility counts so any breakout or any signal is more valid when you have it on uh, a, a hyperactive zone and not a dormant zone and this is all automated you're entering no value mind you in the atm suite you're nowhere saying that oh uh, you know i want this periodicity like you say in a moving average i want 10 periods or 13 periods or five periods no you're not entering it's automatically tailor made based on the volatility of the chart so i think where the difference comes in is that you have moved from a manual car to an automatic car so uh, it's a very simple difference an automatic car is obviously a lot easier to drive a manual car may give you the the rev or the, or the joy and the heroic feeling that oh you know i could pump it my way but again i think this is a market where we're not looking for pumps and emotions we're looking at discipline i, th I think this is where the atm automates it for us and helps us channelize our attention to becoming a little more disciplined because i need you to understand that we need to work on the trader inside us we need to work on that element more importantly we don't want to become an analyst we want to be a good trader right so when you look at the uh, ATM, we also have a power screener. In other words, a power screener is something which scans live. So I could have live scanning based on any of the RMO indicators. And you know, that's those are some of the names. The SWI is a strength weakness indicator. It's an indicator just works of volume. The trend decider, the counter trend indicator for those of you trying to catch tops and bottoms, the breakout catchers, the RMO twos, the integrated scans and mind you this is scanning live so in other words it's it's a separate application that you have which works off your data and it could be end of day data or real time data that you use and if you have real time data it's ticking live so you're seeing the prices change and mind you it's not just a quote board so you would have a signal for example here it says rmo 3d buy right it's already checked that all the three elements are buy and it's come and it's all the signals come up as they happen you don't need to manually run an explorer or run a scan so the dependency of you having to run a scan so you just set a custom stock list you put in time frames you want to scan and automatically it will look for those opportunities so if there are four indicators or ten indicators you wanted to scan off it is doing an absolutely hands-free live automatic scan and it even gives you an email or a voice alert it would actually speak out rmo 3d buy on ibm you know so it could be that blatant so you'd get a voice alert and this is where i think i changed the industry standard in scanning gone are the days where you are going to manually build an explorer or a scan then configure it then try and add filters on it these scans are absolutely automatic. All I want you to do is put in a stock list of your choice, symbols of your choice, and you can select it on running on which time frame you want it to run. And you could set it on any time frame or multiple time frames. You could further enter your positions and monitor, you know, even your profit loss, etc. So it does the job of a perfect go-to screen, a quote board. But I think above all, it's a scanner like no other. It's a scanner that tells you live as the market happens automatically in other words you know a lot of times i had folk coming back to me and say oh you know i missed this trade i forgot this trade well now there's no room to miss a trade because you've got an email alert a voice alert why do i need a voice alert what if i'm walking around in my room when a signal comes up and i'm not glued to the screen 
particularly a guy like me, I don't like to be glued to my screen. Right? I get a headache. A voice alert is much more natural, much more intuitive. So a voice alert or an email alert, you know, I can't have an excuse. Oh, I missed it. You can't miss it. Right? So that's the beauty of it. So the power screener uh, takes away that whole time and energy and effort of building and running scans. Imagine someone on an hourly chart, every hour he has to run five different scans, then try and select. Here I could have 10 different indicators. Look at this a breakout catcher, a zone detector, a trend decider, RMO, RMO2. I can have five different indicators running live, and I could just have a quick view of it and come to a conclusion. So we've thought very deep. And we've thought to the extent that how can I make you more hands-free, more automated, more disciplined? And you know what I need you to focus on is the fact that you know Metastock is doing the analysis for us. Metastock is doing such a wonderful job in terms of piece of software, the charting that it's giving you, the indicators that it's giving you, the level of customization that it's giving you. It's extreme. I think what, what I'm keeping on trying to harp on is let Metastock be the analyst. I want you to be the trader. And you and I are going to make money when we trade well. We need to focus on how do we identify good trades? How do we put the right weight on these trades? And then once we take the trades, how do we manage it? How do we trail the stops on it? So I'd probably like to conclude by saying that, you know, our markets have changed a lot. The whole, you know, whether it's the speed of the market or, you know, whether we, we say that, you know, it's a lot more volatile today, it's much quicker, we have V-shaped reversal, we have gaps, whatnot. Yes, the markets have changed. I think it's time we also change our arsenal of indicators. When you have optimization, when you have tools which can help you become hands-free and disciplined, move in that direction. So I'd urge you to at least give it a try, right? Maybe you're absolutely new to it. Try the RMO, try the ATM. It will make a world of difference. It will give you that space to think. You will concentrate on you, yourself, as the trader, not just as an analyst. Because if you're going to try and do both those roles, chances are it will be a very stressful approach. So let's make trading easy. Let's make trading fun. Thank you for joining me. Over to Jeff, and let's get on to some Q&A as you have them. All right, Rahul. We have some really good questions. That was a. I think you did a great job. I want to commend you on that. I'm not the only one that thinks so either. Uh, we have a, a, quite a few comments that say you did a good job too. <laughs> so, thank you. So the first thank question you. from YouTube I wanted to ask you was from Raman. Uh, Raman says you teach uh, technical analysis in India. I know some people from Kolkata that have pictures with you. Are you teaching in India now? Uh, not exactly at this point in time. My geography right now is not in Kolkata, but uh, yes, we do have courses which keep coming up. And if you're interested in uh, in more learning, well, shoot us an email, support at viratechindia.com. And uh, we'll help you as and when we have a conference or you know, as and when we have these webinars. In fact, there's a wealth of resources within the Metastock page. If you look at the number of videos that Jeff himself has done, he's probably done more than me. And I have done in terms of videos about the RMO or even the ATM. I've done even masterclass series. Every year I do a masterclass series. And uh, you know Jeff will talk to you about the new one. But uh, you know those who are users, you have access to all those videos. There are manuals that I've written. So there's a wealth of information there. And again, we're there to help you uh, as and when we come along with more courses. Uh, Paul Raskin had a, uh, I mean, Paul R. Oops, <laughs> I had a really good question. He says, I really like the RMO system and have had great success. I find that there are a lot of buy signals each day. Do you have a method to rank the signals for which are most likely to be profitable or um, highest to have expected gain? Uh, great question. And I think this is uh, almost uh, coming to the point that last slide that I was talking about is how do you put a weight to the trade because I realized then when you start using the RMO, you start, uh, you know, the first few weeks you, you're trying to adjust to the system, and after a few weeks, you realize, okay, detecting the trend and the signal is easy. Now I want to find out which are the better ones. So, uh, as I was giving you some clues over there, that let's go with first breakouts, let's go with those which have the volume above average, give those a preference. That's obviously going to be my first level of filtration. Then if you use the ATM, 
you have the super filter and zone detector that you can build upon it but mind you even the first two levels of filtration if you use those that itself will give you will funnel through uh, you know a lot of the noise all right that's a great answer ahmed wants to know um if you if you ever reject trades because your stop is too low from your entry in other words if your stop is too low your risk reward goes out of whack does that does that cause you to skip trades personally but jeff i'm loving the questions this time i mean usually we don't have such a such a, a lovely question that comes across so first of all i, I commend you on that question great question because you started thinking risk is to reward and i think there's a lot of learning that uh, we need to you know identify the trade give it weight and then we need to look at the trade management part if you look at that last slide the trade management means try and understand what's the risk is to reward so here the question as emma puts it is what if my risk is too much right if the risk is too much i have two choices a i could skip trading but I don't think we as traders want to skip a trade if we've got a fully, uh, you know, fully confirmed signal. We want to take the trade. We're greedy out there. Uh, but we also have to be good risk managers. So what do you do? You can trade a smaller quantity. That's choice A. Choice B is how about you buy a little bit above the high and then buy a second round if it comes closer to your stop loss. So in other words, let's say if I wanted to buy 100 shares of Apple above say $200. I mean, I'm just rounding up figures so we understand it. So let's say the stop is 190, which feels way too much. So you may say if it goes to 201, I buy my first set. But if it comes down to 194, 195, only if it comes down lower, then I'll average out and buy more. Otherwise, I'll just have half a quantity at work, right? So I think the best way forward is split up your entry rather than you know tightening the stop loss. I don't believe that you should tighten the stop loss. And I don't believe that you should skip the trade. You need to blend in. You need to buy a little bit above the high and then majority when you have a bit of a decline closer to your stop where your money management makes it sensible. Yeah, uh, thank you. Michael says, uh, great, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic explanation. Thank you, Rahul. I'm still learning to enunciate well. Uh, Ghana wants to know what the length of the moving averages you use on volume. Uh, Ghana, what we're using is a 50 period exponential average on the volume. And that is, as I mentioned, it comes to you by default on the RMO trade model template. So you don't need to manually plot that. So just right click apply template and you have it for you. Now, just bear in mind when you use the RMO template, I would definitely tell you to use the system only on stocks that are well traded. You know, don't look at uh, stocks which often don't have a trade. You know, sometimes there's a, a big high people get in terms of looking at penny stocks or delisted stocks which have got relisted. I want you to make sure you have at least 300, 400 bars of historical data. I want you to make sure that you have, you know, a proper open, high, low, close bar with volume. It shouldn't be that, you know, there's, you know, there was no trade for one day in the week. You know, we need for any system to work. Why just the RMO? You shouldn't use any technical indicator for that matter. Right. Uh, Ravi and Sh Sashank have a similar question. Um, and so I'm just going to read Sashank's, but it's going to answer it for Ravi as well. Using the ATM, the direction is primarily long or short. Could we use this to sell simple options based on the based on these signals? <laughs> Uh, uh, a bit of a complicated answer. The answer is yes, but again, to be more specific, I myself do a lot of options. And when you write options, remember you have an, a bit of a naked risk there. So, you know, I wouldn't tell you to always be naked long, I mean, naked short on those options. Don't write those options without understanding them and the risk uh, elements associated with them. So when you do that, you can do that. But uh, remember, there's another very good indicator that you could use the RMO2, part of the ATM again. And uh, you know we'll cover that in the master classes which are going to be coming up. And if you're interested in learning more about that, that's more about where you buy low priced calls and puts. So uh, the RMO2 is where I kind of lean on if you're going to be trading options. Perfect. Um, let's see, uh, Ahmed says, I haven't got my question about, about what, an answer to my question about whether I'll get a recording. So I'm gonna interject there. If you're joining us, Ahmed, 
uh, like you are in GoToWebinar, uh, within an hour of us uh, closing the room down and ending the webinar, you'll automatically get a link up to our uh, YouTube channel. If you're on YouTube and you're watching it and you want to watch it again, uh, just come to the same place. It'll be right there. So um, yeah, we do have a recording. It will be sent. I've already got it set up to go within an hour uh, to you. So there you go. Um, we have, uh, I think, time for one more question, and it's going to be a multiple person question again. We have a few questions. Uh, I'm going to, uh, along these lines, Nalesh wants to know, could you elaborate on how you exit after entering a trade after a buy signal? And that, uh, that's for Nilesh and Ahmed. OK. Um, Nilesh and Ahmed, I think the most important thing is when you get your entry right, you have to realize that if you're on a first breakout, first of all, give yourself 10 or 15 bars in terms of the trend to develop. Then start using the exit swing indicator. That is one which I would lean on. Personally, I tend to believe that we all have a certain financial goal in our trading. You know, whether it's a percentage goal, whether it's a points goal, whether it's a dollar goal, whatever your money management uh, suggests that you should do. So I tend to take, you know, part of my profits at my financial goal. And then I leave majority of the position till I get a change of trend or a proper signal telling me that, OK, we've breached a key level and this is where the trend is changing or I've got a sell signal. So you could split up your exit. And you know, trailing stops is again a beautiful way. As I said, every add-on signal also helps you trail your stops. So use those add-on signals uh, to trail your stops and use the exit swing indicator if you're in that one-way move. Uh, perfect. And I know I promised that that was the last question, but uh, Timothy wants to know, uh, what about using RMO on weekly charts? Is it recommended? Uh, Timothy, it all depends what the time frame uh, you are using, what time frame are you comfortable on? In fact, uh, I, I love addressing the question on time frame because I myself have seen, you know, blending of many time frames. There are a lot of uh, authors, there are a lot of traders out there who say, okay, check a daily, a weekly, a monthly, a lot of cross time frame also. I would say whatever time frame you use, yes, you can use a weekly chart and just stick to that weekly chart. It'll work fine. In fact, the weekly is much smoother. But again, what you have to pay attention to is maybe the weekly is not cut out for everyone. Because if I just tell you to use a five week bars, you know, five weeks low as a stop loss, you may think that that sounds financially crazy. So the reason I don't use a weekly chart is because the stop or the percentage risk on my money tends to get a little wide. So I hope I kind of come across to you. The reason I don't use weekly is whilst it looks very smooth and successful. It's the risk element which worries me at times. But certainly, if you're a long-term player and you can give it the time and you're adjusted with weekly as a frame, why not use the weekly? But the point I keep telling people is stick to one time frame. You know who changes time frames? When we start losing money, we all change the time frame. You were using a five-minute chart. It comes to the stop loss. You make it a weekly chart. Sadly, that's how we behave. We are we're human, and you know those are the bad habits we all get into in trading. What I'd say is, decide your time frame, and you 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 be absolutely militant about that time frame. Have a have a focus on that one time frame. The minute you keep switching time frames, you're giving yourself room to sway. And I'm just trying to say, don't allow that to happen. But certainly, Timothy, the weekly chart will work well. All right, one more last question. <laughs> Um, this is getting uh, fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we had a question earlier about whether this would work with Forex, but uh, also Jerry on YouTube says Forex uses tick volume. Does it work with that? So as long as you give it volume data, there's some indicators which need volume. For example, the ATM SWI or Strength Weakness Index or the zone detectors definitely need volume data. If you don't give it volume data, it's not going to work. But that's just two indicators. Mind you, there are seven core strategies within the ATM. The RMO itself will work without volume data as well, because then it'll use the volatility data. So yes, you can absolutely use it on Forex. I have a lot of people who trade Forex using the ATM and the RMO systems. I myself look at one or two pairs, uh, which interest me quite a bit. So uh, Forex is very usable. But just be careful, don't use the SWI or the zone detector when you use the Forex symbols because the volumes 
you know there's no such exchange governing forex data you know there are a few markets where the official exchange uh, where it's a regulated forex instrument for example in india we have the mcx which has forex instruments so that's exchange regulated has proper volume but when you look at the typical forex with the super leverage accounts where you have all the different brokers functioning you know that's where it becomes a bit of a question mark so my i would urge you if it's international forex you're trading on the uh, you know the big discount big margin leverage brokers just uh, don't use the volume indicators that was that was uh the actual last question <laughs> thank you raul i do uh, right. i do want to reiterate we've had so many people saying what a great lesson this has been i think you've done a great job as always um i really appreciate your coming in here uh your generosity with all of the extra time to go through everybody's questions and answer them all it's an absolutely delight and and you know there was such great questions that I mean, I I could go on if these questions were continuing. <laughs> yeah, I thought we had some really good questions today, but I think I've got them yeah. all. If I missed your question, though, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead and email us, and we'll be happy to kind of make sure we get answers for you. But I think we got them all. So, I uh, with that being said, I'm going to kind of talk about the great classes that we have coming up next week. Thank you again, Rahul. That was great. I appreciate it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start talking now. I <laughs> appreciate uh, 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 all of the detail that Rahul went into with the RMO ATM uh, 3.0. It's been a very, very popular ver uh, add-on. Uh, we've had three different ver uh, variations of it now. And you know, <laughs> Rahul, uh, the power screener is awesome and the way that it goes in there and gives you actually that real-time analysis and scanning. Uh, it's very, very cool in what it does. You get all of the methodologies that are included. And normally this is like $149 per month. Uh, and that's basically kind of the retail rate that we charge for it. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit better than that today. In fact, we're gonna do a lot better. Uh, next week, Rahul is gonna be joining us with uh, Masterclass Session 1 and Masterclass Session 2, uh, where he's gonna talk about the RMO ATM core strategies. We didn't really even kind of touch on this much today, uh, but we're gonna spend a whole hour on them next, on March 16th, uh, 11 a.m. That's Tuesday, I believe. I should actually, yeah, that's, that's next week. Uh, and then on March 17th at 11 a.m. Eastern time, we'll be having our second where we talk about trade detection and management. And with these classes, uh, really kind of our whole goal is to just provide really, really good information and detail and all that kind of stuff. And Rahul does a really, really good job with them. So these two sessions are basically uh, things that we're going to include with our offer today. What we're gonna do today is uh, on top of the normally 149 rate that you'll pay for RMO, we're gonna give you a permanently discounted rate of $99 per month. That's how much you'll pay uh, now. But for 297, we're gonna include both of those sessions that we're doing next week as well as three months of that RMO ATM. So it's about the same cost as if you just paid for RMO ATM 3.0 for three months, you'll basically be getting that rolled in and included as part of the package. So it's basically 297, that'll include three months of the, the RMO ATM 3.0, normally that's $150 a month. You're gonna get both classes uh, that Rahul is doing next week. Uh, um, both of those sessions are included and you get a permanent discounted rate on the RMO ATM, which will be $99 per month. That doesn't ever expire. You basically just, that's the rate that you're gonna pay for it ongoing. Uh, in terms of kind of getting signed up for it, if you don't have access to Metastock, I know a lot of you on YouTube were asking, well, what is Metastock? I'll give you a little bit of a kind of in, some insight about what Metastock is. Metastock's actually been rated number one in its price category. We just got the awards yesterday, 27 years in a row as being the best software in its price category uh, by the readers of technical analysis of stocks and commodities. It has the ability to go in and kind of display all these charts for you, give you really good expert commentary, do scanning, uh, um, and all of that is basically what we're gonna do is if you're brand new to Metastock and you get this uh, 297 bundle, we'll actually include a free month of Metastock or Metastock real time as part of the bundle price to just help you get started. But as part of that done bundle package, it's $297 
You'll get three months of the RMO ADM, both masterclass sessions next week. I look forward to seeing the Adam and that permanent $99 RMO ATM rate. Uh, to take advantage of this, you're going to want to give us a call. This is not an offer that we've got online. 800-882-3040 will get you through one of our sales guys. You can also visit us online at metastock.com slash sales chat. I can't basically like if you just paid for ATM 3.0 for three months, you're basically getting the uh, sessions of the classes for for basically the same price you'd pay. So this is a uh, this is a really, really good offer. I encourage you to try it. And at 297, there's really not a huge risk that you're taking. So give us a call, 800-882-3040, metastock.com slash sales chat. Thanks for coming today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stayed are staying healthy and safe and maybe getting a vaccine in the future. <laughs> so in any case, thanks for coming. I hope to see you at the next one. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Thank you, Rahul, again for your time.